Pretty much no spoilers for Joker. What makes a good comic book movie? What makes a, a great comic book movie? What, why do people get their money out for these films? Why are they so popular? And I mean, they are really popular. Look at Endgame. It is the highest grossing film of all time. But why? Is it the, the CG? The big Hollywood actors, the action, the story, the characters? Well, you see, years ago and even now, people still believe that comic book movies need to have action. Quote, I quote, need to have action, story, CG, great big set pieces. Okay, picture this. A few years ago, I tell you that there was a comic book movie that didn't have any of this. It didn't have any action, didn't have any CGI, didn't have any superheroes, didn't even have any super villains. Okay, now what if I told you this movie was called Joker? You wouldn't believe me, right? A Joker movie without Batman, a Joker movie without visual effects, a Joker movie without action. At this point, you'd probably punch me in the face and tell me I'm a liar. But it happened. And I actually, honestly, couldn't even be happier. Send in the clouds. I personally don't think Joker is the best film ever made. I don't think it's a masterpiece and I don't, don't think it's entertaining from beginning till the end. There are some story issues that I kind of had with it, but... And at some cases, sometimes, I'm saying sometimes, I got bored. But what did I think? I think Joker changed cinema with brilliant cinematography and absolutely brilliant themes and issues with extremely well written characters and over the top promises that make you feel scared, disturbed and excited all at the same time. Let's get to my first point. If you just smile. Let's refer to my first statement that a few years ago we would never believe to have gotten a comic book movie like this. Where films like Suicide Squad and BVS and Fan Force Strike exist, DC films were heading on a really, really bad path, trying to be like the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe. Then Wonder Woman was released, and then people actually liked it, then Aquaman, then Shazam, and then... Honestly, I think that DC realised that we just don't need to do something like Marvel. What Marvel does is let the studio get in the way of a director's vision. Let the filmmaker be a filmmaker. Let's make a real movie with a real budget and call it freaking Joker. That's what it was. Imagine if this movie wasn't associated with Joker, if it wasn't a DC film, if it wasn't a comic book film, and if it was just a movie about a mentally ill loner with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash. It wouldn't have done nearly as well as it did when it was called Joker. Like it's nearly on a billion. And look at the budget. There are some people who say that they love movies, but really the only movies that they watch are superhero movies. And I'm so happy that those types of people love Joker. And now, thanks to Joker, they'll watch more personal movies, more movies with heart, more soul. Okay, now let's talk about the cinematography. The cinematography in Joker is literally beautiful to look at. Like, look at this. Look at this shot. Nearly every shot in Joker felt like it had a purpose. The shots didn't feel unnecessary. They didn't feel without a purpose. You, that, that made no sense. There were literally no boring shots in the movie. Every shot was mesmerizing. And... The camera feels like it was a part of the movie. It feels like it was a part of the characters. Which brings me to my next topic, the characters. Can I just get out of the way that Walking Phoenix's performance is the best on-screen Joker we have ever seen? Yes, I am including Heath Ledger. I mean, this is my opinion. You can tell how much Joaquin actually cared about this movie. And Joaquin is very picky over his scripts. You can tell that he loved this character, this movie. And if it wasn't for Joaquin Phoenix's performance and Hilder's beautiful score, this movie would have been below average. I'm telling you, Joaquin's performance makes this movie. When you hear his laugh, and there are lots of that in the movie, it is so disturbing and unsettling and it literally screams Joker from the moment you hear it. Let's go from the performances and move on to the character of Arthur Fleck. Arthur is the hero in his own story. That is what a good villain should be, a villain who is the hero of their own point of view. Not like this, or this, but like this. Why do you think Vulture in Homecoming was so great, so sympathetic? Because he's literally the hero of his own story, a great dad to Liz, and he's just trying to do the best to provide for his family. And Arthur is literally the hero of his own story. He has a mental illness which adds to the character, he finds out some things in the movie that makes him do bad things, 
He finds out that he was lied to his whole life and to add the extra cherry on top, society pushes him away. They don't care about Arthur. There was this really great line in the movie, which is kind of a spoiler, so skip to this time code right here. Three, two, one. So yeah, there was this great line in the movie. It goes something like this. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me, but these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne went and cried about them on TV? That was a brilliant line showing that Arthur believes what he's doing is right. He's trying to make people notice him. Okay, spoilers over. People don't care about Arthur and that is why he wants to make a difference. He has nothing left to lose. All the other characters, I'm just going to go over the two characters very briefly. Murray Franklin was great. His and Joaquin's acting in the quote big scene at the end were brilliant. The whole big scene at the end was done so perfectly that it makes up for the rest of the movie. Murray played his character like a, like a horrible person who thinks that he's doing right by entertaining people. But the reason why he entertains people, how he entertains people is by making fun of other people. De Niro makes the character feel real. Sophie Dummond was kind of the flaws of the movie. I see what they were going for, someone that Arthur could, you know, relate to, but I wasn't really invested, and I know that's not what they were aiming for, but I just wasn't. I felt like you could have taken her character out and you wouldn't have missed a thing. And thank God that she wasn't in the movie that much. So yeah, that's all I have to say about Joker. I hope more movies like this get made, and not just movies comic book movies. I feel like the problem with the comic book movies is that they're just trying to make them quote look cool and with big CGI and set pieces. They don't have that much character driven movies. Now don't get me wrong there are a lot of comic book movies that don't follow this formula which is which is great but other movies do. I hope that Joker changes that. I really do and I think it can. Joker doesn't focus on superheroes or even super villains. I think the problem with comic book movies is that they try so hard to focus on the super part of superhero instead of focusing on the hero part. Joker just focuses on the villain part of super villain. Send in the clown.